Today's item has to be one of the ones that I've, I'm just confused about it. I have no clue what to think. Like it's, it's, I, I don't know. It's the sort of thing that's rich people nonsense, but at the same time, kind of reasonable and maybe cool, but also just really dumb. So the people that made this, clearly they just started with what I personally think is a terrible idea but then they have executed it in a way that at every single turn that they took, they were just like, you know what? Let's do it the best way possible. It's the Cocoa Motors walk car. The basic thought was, you know, what if you had a car, but you could just put it in your bag? So do we have a bag around here? Apparently it fits in the size of, you know, like a 13 inch laptop. Compared to my laptop right here, it's, um, it's a lot thicker. I don't think the wheels come off. I know that you can take them off to like replace them if they get damaged, but I don't think you can actually just take them off to put them in your bag. Yeah, no, that's not happening. The basic thought of this is it's kind of like, you know, like a super small Segway or something. So you're going from like, say the transit station to your work. You just kind of pop this thing out of your bag, check it on the ground, you can zoom around or like go to businesses or stuff. It's real like dense city getting around. And it's two thousand dollars. I don't know how to feel about that. Um, <laughs> so that's that's kind of where we get into the silly rich people side of this. I'm pretty confused, like how to feel about it, because on one hand, like two thousand dollars for this, like come on. But on the other hand, like we're here in BC, people spend loads of money on like ATVs and random crap like that all the time. Like, what does two thousand dollars get you? Like a Polaris with bad tires from like the 90s and like every time that you get on it, you feel like you're gonna die. I don't think you're gonna feel like you're gonna die when you get on this thing. At least I sure as heck hope not. <laughs> I'm also confused about who it's for. A lot of these sort of like little, like one wheels and that sort of stuff seem to be targeted more towards like basically kids that wanna like rock it around and have fun. Whereas this is much more like professional seeming and some of the advertisements show like older people on it. Like it looks like they're walking, but they're just on this thing. It's pretty funny. <laughs> on the top, we have a polycarbonate sheet and there's not a lot of grip. Like I would kind of think on the sides, there's a bit of grip tapey stuff, but I would want to put on like some actual grip tape or at least like some sex wax or I guess for those of you that don't know, that's what you put on like your surfboard to give you traction. It's, it's not lube. How you use it is there are pressure sensors. So I believe that there's one here, here, and then there and there. So for the front and back of each of your feet. So you kind of like, when it feels pressure on both of the front ones, you know, you go forward. When it feels pressure on one side more than the other, then you turn to that side and so on, you get it. I have no clue how it's going to feel. Apparently it can go 16 kilometers an hour. There is a maximum weight of 80 kilograms though, which is, I think, 180 pounds? Let's get into why I'm like so confused because it kind of just looks like a little toy, but all of like the chassis is made out of a sheet of carbon fiber. So it basically has like a carbon fiber monocoque. It's pretty much an F1 car. And then a lot of the other bits are made out of uh, 70, 75 aluminum. They don't say the temper, so it's pretty much meaningless. It does mean that you have like magnesium, copper and zinc in there. It's, it's good aluminum, but again, meaningless if you don't know the temper. And apparently they have the smallest and most powerful in-wheel motors. It's really impressive in a lot of ways, despite being this. <laughs> Should we just do it, Jono? Yeah, but before, talk about it. Oh, yes. How, how could I forget about our sponsor, Ridge Wallet. <laughs> Ridge Wallet's a compact wallet to keep your, you know, pant bulge down has an RFID blocking plates to keep people from stealing your info and has a cash strap or money clip so that you can hold cash. Save 10% and get free worldwide shipping at Ridge Wallet by using offer code Linus at ridgewallet.com slash Linus. With this little carrying handle here, it's pretty easy to just, you know, walk around with. I believe that it's under three kilograms. So it is pretty similar to a lot of laptops in weight and size. I don't have it on just yet. I did want to just see what it feels like to stand on it. One thing that I was pretty scared about when I first saw it was that like you hit just the smallest of pebbles and you would just die. But one thing it has that really surprised me is four wheel independent suspension. 
So each one has like a little spring in it so it can like move around and hopefully absorb bumps and rocks and stuff. Turn this on, you just press this button right here. That's sport mode, that's off. Let's try it just there. Okay. Ah. I don't like this. <laughs> I feel like that my feet weren't on the back sensors there. <laughs> okay. I really don't like the stance. My feet are like really close together and it's kind of terrifying. Like this is not a very like powerful stance. Like when you think about when you're on like a longboard or like a surfboard or something, you have like a much wider, more generous stance than this. We have sport mode. <laughs> Doesn't accelerate very briskly. Okay, stopping, stopping, stopping. <laughs> I think that their method for stopping is terrible. So what you have to do is lift one toe up, but the problem is, is that like when you're lifting one toe up, you have so little balance and it's also really hard to control because you're naturally putting like more weight on your other leg, which means you start turning. <laughs> Okay, 10 degree incline. <laughs> uh, come on. Yeah. Well, that was genuinely terrifying. My expectation was that it would be kind of like, yeah, it doesn't really make sense for here, but if you're in like a crowded city, it could make a lot more sense. But just the turning radius and the general control was not such that I would feel comfortable doing this in a crowd of people at all. <laughs> I am very sorry to the good people over at Cocoa Motors. This is probably quite hard to watch, but I am very curious to see what makes this thing tick. Oh. You can let go. Ha ha ha! Okay. Now that we're in here, we get to see the strain gauges that are measuring how much force you're putting on here. So. Yeah, one for each front foot and one for each back foot. And how these work is basically you just have a whole bunch of little wires that are, you know, really close together. And as you like push on them, the distance between those wires changes, which changes the resistance and all of this, which is then measured by the microcontroller, which tells it how to fast to go. Now, it is, <laughs> I'm really impressed by just the carbon fiber chassis that this thing has. You can see everything's mounted to it. So let's, let's dig deeper. There we go. So here's our power input that you can see there. Okay, I was a bit confused there for a second because this is a 2700 milliamp hour battery, whereas my Pixel 5 here has 4080 milliamp hours, which would mean that this is like way more battery than this guy here, but it's because of the voltage. So this is running at 25.2 volts. So, you know, it's actually like a decent bit of power. In here, you get to see the suspension. I was pretty confused there for a second. So it looks like that it's pretty much only in this direction for the front, as you can see here. You've got a pretty stiff spring that goes along like that. No damping as far as I can tell, but like, whatever. <laughs> the parts in here are really impressive. Like you can see this right here looks like that it's probably cast aluminum but this right here is all CNC machined, or at least cast and then CNC machined. All of the electronics here are conformal coated. I would say that it's not waterproof. Well, I guess there's a gasket in here, so that's waterproof, but if water gets in, it's not gonna be in great shape. Although, what do you expect? I don't know how I feel about this thing, if I'm honest. For nearly two grand US, you can get like an e-bike which is pretty sweet. Or you can get a one wheel, which I think is a lot cheaper and seems just way more capable. I was really hoping that I could tell you that like in its home country of Japan, if you're in like a dense city and you wanna get from like the train to a business to wherever and have something that just like easily checks in your backpack, this thing's awesome. But I don't think I'd use it in a crowd. Like if there's people around, I just don't have the confidence in using this. Like it doesn't break fast enough. 
and the turning radius is just way too big for like weaving in between people. That's about where we're at, sorry. Well anyway, this was a bit different, but I hope you guys still liked the video. Uh, hit like, get subscribed, and I don't know. Actually, you have an HP laptop that's coming in this week and I am really excited for that. Bye.